Shlomo Bagelstein, have you finished your Pride Month prepping yet? I got <laughs> enough food and gas to last a few months during the outbreak, but it might not be enough. <laughs> I think Pride Month requires a different kind of prepping, honestly. The race is rigged. You bleached your asshole recently. Mick F, thank you for the 20. Razor, do tears and rain as Mario again said it, since it got cut off. I laughed so hard I fell off my chair and I want it for my ringtone. What? <laughs> I've seen the things you be, but I wouldn't believe. A tanker ship's on fire off the shoulder of Orion. <laughs> Woohoo! Yahoo! Ashley. Fuck you! Bowser and Wario are what we call hashtag nasty persons. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are a nasty person. You are a nasty person. <laughs> that that shit where she just it it was like a really bad argument Take with your like damn claws off. It's like a really bad argument with like a catty bitch at a coffee shop or something. You know what I mean? Like it was like she kept she kept adding shit to what he was saying. Right? No, no, no. Actually, there's no evidence that blah blah. blah right? She kept that's he would, he would get one sentence out and she'd add. This is the thing that people don't get, and I still think they don't understand it. A huge part of Trump's success in 2016 was not so much that everyone loved him, it was that every, it was that you were forced, just in defense of truth and, and fucking sometimes antipathy towards the media, but more often than not, just basic defense of truth, you, the media would corral you into supporting Donald Trump, or, or at least defending him, right? We're... I feel like the media, after a short while of having it, like, figured out how they could take him down, they have completely lost the plot already. They can't help themselves, because they managed to pull off the, the big steal, and they thought that was it. And it's clear now that it was not. Donnie Braska, thank you for the 35. While I'm not thrilled about the potential arrival of the Thousand Year Woke... It seems doomed to collapse sooner or later, even if I'd rather observe said collapse from a safe distance. What worries me is afterwards, who will be able to build upon the ashes of the collapse? Ah. The regular folks of the West or hordes of migrants with entirely incompatible ideas of what society should look like? What uh, the big, fuck? Big, big question is... Is there a means of not just stopping, but almost entirely reversing the Great Replacement without resorting to collectivism? Collectivism will exacerbate that problem. What you're witnessing right now is... You know, what, what people call the Great Replacement while they obsess about race and such and, you know, racial replacement and such is really taxpayer replacement. Um, this happened in the latter stages of the Roman Empire, too. Um, as the Roman Empire added more and more entitlement and welfare programs and such, it's a part of Roman the Roman collapse that people haven't uh, or never really talked about. They needed... Um, more people to pay taxes. They also had a problem with the devaluation of currency. Yeah. And, um... But the one thing they wouldn't do is free their slaves so that they could have more... So, so they tried to Im import people who would pay taxes. It didn't wind up working. And it won't work this time, either. This is what the refugee crisis in Europe was about. It's really about replacing aging and dying taxpayers. And that's what it's about in the United States. With the added benefit of, with the added benefit of helping the power, the party in power to remain in power as well, because they tend to vote for one party. But that's that's why collectivism can't really be used to fight it, because collectivism is statism, and statism is how we got here. Statism is the reason that we are uh, witnessing this. They need the additional taxpayers. Why do they need the additional taxpayers? Because they have the additional government programs, and you need to pay for them with something. All right, here we go. Clayton Machine. After You'd be so proud of your waifu. Any thoughts on, after threatening to do it for over a year and a half, Washington letting the title 
uh, 42 finally expire without extension. We talked they're, about that a they're little. They're hoping for a big wave of illegal immigration. I mean, this the, I, I honestly think this was the plan since uh, Trump was out, since before Trump was out. I uh, mentioned it earlier, but I, they need to replace their taxpayer base. Um, white people are not uh, are not fucking or having kids. They need a taxpayer base that continues to procreate. Guess who uh, continues to procreate? Latin America. All right, here we go. Again, late stage Roman Empire shit. Whoa! Wow! That was a really dumb boost. I shouldn't have done that. Hit the wall harder than Ann Coulter. I actually just watched you, you, somebody was talking about Have Gun Will Travel and Tate the other day. Amazing episode I was watching the other day. Where he rolls into this town and it's basically this kangaroo court pops up. And... The judge is such a power-hungry bastard. He sets it up so that, um, like, like he's he's this doctor saves a gunman's life. He doesn't ask what happened. The guy had a bullet wound. He saves his life, and the guy goes off and kills someone else after he's fixed up, and the gunman runs off. So the fucking power-hungry judge holds the doctor liable for saving the dude's life as a murderer and Paladin rolls into town sees the guy chained up and says oh fuck this and he decides to defend him in this kangaroo court that has that's immediately popped up everyone on the jury owes the fucking judge a favor and shit anyways it culminates in fucking Paladin he's disarmed in the court because he's initially wearing his gun but they know like there's some bullshit going on and eventually he's saying that if Paladin loses the case he's gonna get fucking murdered that it's he's gonna be on the hook for murder as well and finally like Paladin goes full on like we'll have justice when the judge will hang and at one point he manages he like manages to get back a hold of his gun somehow and he kills like the bailiff and someone else <laughs> like he literally guns him down and the judge I remember this brilliant sequence where the judge, like, points at him and shrieks. He's like, Sir, there's not a court in this land that wouldn't consider you a murderer for opening fire in a court of law. And Paladin, with the gun smoke still fucking coming out of the barrel of his gun, turns to the judge and says, In the immortal words of Thomas Jefferson, The tree of liberty must from time to time be watered with the blood of tyrants. <laughs> <laughs> what an amazing show, dude! <laughs> oh, oh, shut it down. Oh, you gotta watch Have Gun Will Travel. What a fucking great show. And by the way, it was a show Gene Roddenberry wrote, just in case anyone tries to sell you on the idea of him being a commie. Fiction theorizer ideas on why people aren't reproducing currently. I mean. I think a lot of people just don't think they can afford kids. I think uh, the ubiquity of porn, too. It's um, it's easier to be uh, asexual, right? A little, or or at least not to pursue relationships as hard. It's it's a lot of it's a combination of a lot of factors, and also I think the weaponization of marriage. The, the way marriage courts have become such a fucking clown show. People have... People have witnessed so many marriage horror stories, unfortunately, that, uh, I mean, look, guys, when you have a nation where you literally can drive down the street and see a divorce store, that's a problem. That's a problem. It seems that neocons don't hate intrusive oligarchs or propaganda in place of culture. They hate that they don't control them. I, I explained this on Gorka. Um, again, another reason I made my Lincoln video. There was no partisan flip in this country. Republicans are the statist, top-down, federal system, federal power party. Um, they always were. 
what happened with Trump and, and I guess before that Goldwater and Buchanan and some others is that they affected a conservative small government takeover of the Republican Party. If that's successful, that will be a partisan flip. But there was no partisan there was no actual partisan flip. It never happened. The Democrats used to be the conservative party, but they were taken over internally. Aw. Uh, that fucking helicopter. Fucking helicopter screwed us. The Democrats used to be the conserv the only conservative party really in this country, and they were taken over um, after the Whigs went away. From within, they were slowly subsumed by Hamiltonians, because that's what the Whigs were. They were a Hamiltonian party. And uh, in, in the immediate aftermath of the Civil War, the Jeffersonian Democrats, who hadn't actually stumped for the war largely, were blamed for it. And so that caused former Whig Democrats to become even more ubiquitous in the South. And so basically the Democrats became the ultimate expression of statism and Hamiltonianism. And the Republicans simply stayed at the same level of statism and Hamiltonianism that they were under Abraham Lincoln. This is why Abraham Lincoln is lionized, because he's kind of the linchpin that holds this massive lie together that we have a two-party system. We don't. We have two levels, two different rates of the same statist party. Trump is attempting a takeover of the, public, of the Republican Party. One that was initiated uh, during the Progressive Era by Taft, continued under uh, Warren Harding and Coolidge, uh, later with the Goldwater Revolution and uh, even to an extent Reagan, and, and now Trump, right? This is, this is what's happening. You gotta, you gotta understand these things, because you, you need to accept your role as the... You're essentially um, enacting an insurrection of the Republican Party. You're trying to take it back over. Stealth Creations, Musk a simp or just kinky like many older men for egregious women? Well, I honestly think it has more. If you want my honest opinion about why Elon Musk is possibly hiring that woman, if it is true, it has not been confirmed, I don't think. He has been asked many, many times about hiring CEOs for Twitter. And he has repeatedly said, and I think I'm quoting him directly here, I'd love to hire a CEO, but the problem is there are no good candidates for CEO. I think he had to settle on a shit bag because there's only shit bags available. <laughs> I really think that's what it is. Because who wants that job? Like, really? He doesn't even want that job, and he bought the fucking company for a billion. I'm honestly wondering if he'll try to out-French Macron by dating Angela Merkel. Ohio gun owner, what's your opinion on George Armstrong Custer during the Indian Wars? During the Indian Wars, he was actually a really, really good scout and guide to the, uh, to the area of the Dakota Badlands. Um, he saved a lot of lives doing that, but at the same time, uh, his military strategy left a lot to be fucking desired. And he basically tipped Here's the fuck the out of his hand and let the and Native cool. Americans know, let the Sioux specifically know, basically where he was and what he was going to do. And basically that all they needed to do to beat him was overpower him with numbers. And that's why he died and why all of his men died, so... Uh, he was good at certain things, and unfortunately, those are not the things that he was uh, being tasked with doing at the time. Sweet. What's this? Texas P12. Uh, Grenade. Ooh, that could come in handy. Favorite zombie movie? Favorite zombie movie? I'm going to go with Demons. Oh, Hobo, you, you didn't answer. Favorite zombie movie? Oh, gosh. Um, one that I... It's been a while since I saw it, but one that I liked a lot was uh, 28 Weeks Later. That one's actually pretty scary. Not 28 Days Later, 28 Weeks? 28 Days Later. Well, there's 28 Weeks Later is the sequel, yeah. I think. Yeah. You, you like that one better? Uh, it's been a while since I saw either one, but I just remember that one was... The zombies were pretty damn nuts in those movies. I'd have to go with Demons. I'd go with Razor's pick. I don't think I've seen that one. It's, what, it's a cool 80s. It's an 80s movie. 
with an all heavy metal soundtrack, including Saxon and Accept, by the way. Really? And uh, it's all about just a group of random people getting Succulous stuck in a movie ones. theater in the middle of a an ongoing zombie outbreak. It, it's really badass. Oh, dang. I'll have to uh, find that. Then. Yeah, we did a Rageaholic Cinema on it. Oh, okay. Going somewhere. It's a Dario Argento movie.